one of the most beautiful great houses in Jamaica, the Greenwood Great House in St. James. Close to the coast with a beautiful view. As beautiful as this place may be today, the more violent this place was in the past. This house was built by the Barretts. The family came to Jamaica in the 1660s with the British invading forces. And after amassing a lot of wealth, they constructed this house mainly for entertainment. They resided at Barrett Hall, which is now a derelict house about a mile in the hills. Mm -hmm. Also at Cinnamon Hill Great House, four and a half miles in that direction. Elizabeth's father was born in Jamaica. When he became wealthy, he went to England. She never came to Jamaica. Her brothers, however, were sent here to manage the sugar estate and they are buried here. The Barretts were the largest plantation owners. They owned from Little River to Falmouth. That is about 12 miles along the coast and this was one of many of their estates. They owned over 2,000 slaves and 84,000 acres of land. Here we have an hand pump fire cart. Two men had operated it, one on either side. Mm -hmm. They would get their source of water from a lake or a pond. It would have been sucked in down the bottom, pumped out at the top. A water cannon from this period. Just before the slaves got their freedom, they started a spate of burning so naturally. These were their form of insurance against crime. This house is without a doubt stunning. Not only because of its obvious beauty, especially because of its history. The colonial period was the darkest time in Jamaica, which is all too easy to forget with the beauty of this place. Even in the basement there are gun slots still intact. There are over 300 books in the collection. Most of them are signed by members of the Barrett family. The oldest book in the collection was published in 1697. This is quite an interesting piece. It's a desk resting on an ordinary table. It is over 200 years old. It has quite a few secret compartments. To it. It's Even the Andrew's Lord is another compartment. This is repeated over here. Writing equipment should have been kept here. This here. It's a set of library steps to get to the top of the shelf and it converts into a chair. And that largest metal container outside is a sugar boiler. It is beautifully inlaid, hundreds and hundreds of separate pieces of wood glued together to give this effect. It has to be observed for some time to fully appreciate the amount of fun hours. It was made by the famous piano maker John Broadwood. He was famous in the 1850s. He is a gentleman who made a piano for Beethoven that actually satisfied him. No one else could. This is Victoria's coronation in 1838. That's an iron etching of Elizabeth Barrett drawing on the wall. On the table is a Chinese punch bowl. It is made from bronze. It is the last will and testament of the Reverend Thomas Birchell. He was a Baptist minister. In 1831, he and William Nib were accused of inciting the slaves under some sharp to rebel. It became the bloodiest rebellion in Jamaica's history. Okay. It led to the slaves getting their freedom three years later. Sam Shab is now one of Jamaica's national The National Heroes Day in Jamaica is celebrated on the third Monday in October. We call this corner our Dr. Corner. Here she is, a lady in grey. The elderly gentleman in the rocking chair is a former owner of Greenwood, the Honorable William Carr. 
When, as the story goes, this helper you see here died two years before the photograph was taken, yet she came out in it. We refused to believe this. We first assumed it was a double exposed photograph. But we were reliably informed that they did not have double exposed photographs in those days, mm -hmm. as a copper plate was used instead of a negative. This has left us in a state of confusion. We have now decided it's a bad old photograph. However, feel free to draw your own conclusions. Below there is a tea toy. In the past, when tea was rare and expensive, the mistress of the house have kept it on a lock and key. It's beautifully inlaid, very intricately, so the inlay work is known as tumbled wear. This is an English court jester's chair. Here you can see the court jester's emblem. And above is a beautifully carved face with a gentle smile. And this is a 17th century Spanish brazier. They used to keep a small fire in the copper bowl to ward off mosquitoes or to keep their hands and feet warm if necessary. The floor we are standing on is made from Jamaican marble. It comes from Sir Giant in St. Thomas. As already mentioned, this house was mainly used for entertainment. The people drank and ate abundantly while being served by their slaves. Now take a look and listen to this old historical jukebox. You would have put a penny in the slot. You have got a choice of 10 tunes on the side by turning this small handle to whichever number you desire. See if you can recognize it. Quite a familiar old English number. Let's try this time. inside so your employer would know what time he started work at time for. And this is a record for this instrument. There are more records in those boxes. On the side of one is written country dances, songs and marches. It's a wind organ and this is what it sounds like. Quite spooky. Not only the sound of the wind organ is quite spooky, the house itself has a very spooky character. Here we have a mini chest of drawers. It is over 206 years old. It top is not original, but everything else is. Above is a Chinese watercolor and a nice paper. 
This is an old floor spread to put over three in my head here. The colonists imported almost a million captive Africans in total, with approximately 600,000 coming to Jamaica between 1530 and 1800. No one can see the actual number of enslaved people, as the slave period lasted from 1494 to 1834. However, the abolition of slavery did not mean the freedom of the enslaved. Many years had to pass for this, and in my opinion, slavery is still going on. Victorians were prudish about courting couples sitting beside each other with like stutching and so barrier. Mm -hmm. Incidentally, some love seats of continent around at least to form a third seat. Guess who used to sit in the middle? The chaperone, a person who accompanied the couple. When it came to love in public, the British were brutes and this does not apply to their brutality towards slaves. Between the Kesarina trees and the stone wall, that's the original coach car. 1826, the right honorable Richard Barrett won 100 pounds for having the best mind of macadamite in the eye. It ran from the main road to this house and was the best mile of road in Jamaica. This, of course, is the front of the house that was the main inside. From side to side, you can see the actual curve in the earth's surface on this veranda. This is a serving table. It is made from mahogany. Stretching the length of the tunnel just to give you an idea of the size tree of the tree. That's a dripstone for filtering water. These are Spanish jars that were left here in the 1660s. They were used for general storage purposes. About a couple of rather large boards that were used on board lighters to take sugar to the sailing ships. Here we have a bathtub. It is made from cedar and this is one piece of wood just to give you an idea of the size tree that came off. And this walkway is called a whistle as walk for when the slaves take in the food from the kitchen they would whistle. So the master would know they're not eating the food while taking it. This leads us into the original kitchen. It has been converted into a bar named the Lever Crossing. Okay. This is where they have done their cooking. The center wall has been taken out. There's a double chimney going up yeah. and there's a brick oven over here to my left. This table is from 1714. It's a queen and table with gate lights. On it there's a spittoon but no longer in use please. Various land transactions they made, their titles and deeds. There's even a list of slaves' names over here. One of the slaves was called Trouble. I dare say that was a reflection on his personality. This is a man trap. No words can describe the horror of that time. These are some interesting artifacts that they found around the property. The golden years have come to pass. I cannot see, I cannot pee. I cannot chew, I cannot screw. My memory shrinks, my hearing stings. No sense of smell, I look like hell. The golden years have come to pass. The golden years can kiss my ass. 
On the one hand, you marvel at the beauty of this place, and on the other hand, you mourn all those who could not do so at that time. We have to confront the past in order to understand it and do everything we can to ensure that such atrocities are not repeated. If we look back to the beginning of time, one thing is certain. History repeats itself, but this is not set in stone. It is up to us.